Today, I wanted to make a video talking about how to negotiate for anything that you want. I've certainly done this throughout my tech sales career, but even more recently, as this channel has grown, I've had different companies reach out and now start asking me to promote products on the channel or get affiliate links or things of this nature, and I'm getting consistently lowballed. And I wanna show you actual examples of how I've negotiated with these companies to get a better deal out of the start. And again, this is all happening because of your support, so I can't thank you enough. And if you've liked our videos in the past, would appreciate it subscribe if you haven't already. But I think the important thing to set is this expectation if you're trying to break into tech sales or maybe you're closing deals in tech sales for the first time, people are going to try and take advantage of you. And you don't need to take this personally. As, as difficult as it is, it's easy to sit back and complain, play the victim and say this is predatory. Well, the reality is if you look on the flip side, if I'm a business owner, I need to keep my costs down and my income up so the business can sustain, so the business can grow, etc. So it's just kind of a brutal reality, and if you wanna sit and get mad about it, that's not a long-term strategy to be successful. So the best thing you can do is learn more about it with videos like this and equip yourself for these situations. So I always recommend in the case of an SDR, yes, comp range is important, and yes, you can always negotiate for more comp. But before we talk about the specific strategy, I think it's important to check in with yourself where you're at. Do you need a tech sales job? And are you willing to take an offer because it's better to get your foot in the door versus maybe you're balancing multiple offers and you do wanna see how much you can get out of a specific role? While this is a frustratingly vague statement and somewhat intuitive, I will say obviously in any situation, the way that you negotiate effectively is having maximal leverage on your side. So like as an example, I made a video on this in way more depth, but I'll restate here. One of the tactics that I deploy when I'm negotiating salary, if I'm accepting an offer from a company, maybe they lowballed me on salary, maybe I want a little bit more. Usually one, I'm gonna have multiple offers or interview processes in play. And also two, especially in the case where I have a job and they're trying to get me to go work for their company, it is totally fair for me to say, hey, this isn't enough justification for me to leave this job. And so a lot of times, again, pending your situation where you're at, maybe this is the only offer you have and it makes sense to just start. In that situation, probably a good idea to not negotiate super hard. But if you are you know, getting lowballed, if you do have leverage and you wanna get more, the tactic that I always recommend is to just be very transparent and also make a counter offer and very clearly state that you're willing to sign within 24 hours if they can match that price point. So like as an example, you're an SDR, you get an offer for 75K to join this company. You really want to work as an SDR, but you've got an offer from a company you're not as serious about that's at 85K. You can come back to that company that you wanna work for and say, hey, thank you so much for this interview process. I wanna be fully transparent with you. I did just recently receive an offer for 85,000. This would be my first choice and for me, if you guys can meet at 85,000, I'm confident that I can sign within 24 hours and I'm ready to move forward. This is an example of the way you can phrase it. But again, what it does is not only show that you can negotiate respectfully, but also it's almost a win-win. They're gonna like the fact that you're a little bit aggressive without being completely overboard. And they're also gonna appreciate the transparency and honesty, because again, assuming you come through with that commitment and sign within 24 hours if they match, it's a win-win all around in my opinion. Now, I also wanna talk about if you're closing deals or maybe talking with a prospect who's trying to really haggle you on price. Obviously, if they're trying to negotiate this early on, candidly, they're probably not a serious buyer. And I've literally had conversations with buyers where I'm like, hey, if price is this much of a concern, let's get it out of the way right now. What is the biggest concern about cost and what is your budget? And usually if you call someone who's aggressively asking you for price, aggressively asking you for all this information, they don't really know and they're just trying to see what they can get in the first place. And again, it doesn't mean you overcome that objection and keep the deal moving. Maybe it means that this guy's just gonna waste your time and negotiate with you. So you tell him, hey, this is our price. If you're ready to move forward and continue the conversation, I'm here, but we can't meet your demands. And you've just saved yourself a ton of time. It's either cutting it off now or talking to them for the next two months and wasting everyone's time. Like, I promise you, I would show you a real world example. And I wanna show you this response I used to someone who is intentionally trying to lowball me. In all respect to them, they're running their own business. But again, the key thing with this channel, with what I'm doing, is I did not make this to sponsor any and every product that comes to me. I wanna make sure that everything that I do is very authentic to our viewers and useful. And so when I had someone come to me and ask if I could sponsor a product for free before they gave me any type of agreement or anything of that nature, not even worth my time. And so you'll see in this response, again, in this situation, I have leverage. I'm not even being mean. I'm not even trying to negotiate the top dollar here, but I'm just letting them know exactly why I do what I do and how a free promotion of just a random product doesn't fit what I'm trying to do. So if they wanted to even have a conversation, they needed to provide me an affiliate link. And again, I'm not mad at them for asking. I don't want to paint them in a bad light. But again, the point being here in this situation, I had all the leverage here. 
I don't necessarily need them to sponsor. I sell my own products. We have a course that we sell as well. So why am I going to offer something on my channel for free that doesn't have to do with tech sales, that doesn't even necessarily fit directly? And so all that to say, I countered with the email that you read basically saying, hey, like, I appreciate you reaching out, but unless I have an affiliate link from the start, unless my users know that I'm promoting something, and if they buy it, I endorse it, one, and two, it would help grow the channel and create opportunities for our users, then yes, I would consider it. And they went back and were like, oh, let us check budget, and what do you know? A week later, after me intentionally not responding, they magically found budget for a link for me. Now, I know I've kind of hopped around all over, but I think that's a very powerful point. Again, showing that how when I have leverage, I can call the shots, and by the way, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. If something is truly not worth my time unless they meet my criteria, that's the best position to be in when you're in a negotiation situation. And so bringing it back to maybe you're an account executive and your final stages in a deal, let's say it's a $100,000 deal and they're trying to ask for 20% off. You know internally, one, you can use budgets to your advantage. Obviously, there's things you may be able to add, like if they commit for multiple years, you could add in a discount or maybe, you know, whatever it is. Maybe they buy a higher support package or something of that nature and you can further incentivize it or throw that in for free if that gets them over the line. But again, this comes back to never giving anything without having a clear ask in return. Yes, maybe deep down, you know that your company can give a 20% discount and meet them at 80,000 in this example, but also that means that you're getting a smaller commission. So I would ask a few different things, like what does 20% more off give you that you don't feel that we're meeting you at now? Or why the need for 20% discount when we've gotten this far and had this many successful tests of our product, whatever it might be. You can use that information to navigate accordingly. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean that a discount is a bad thing. Ultimately, if you're that far, sometimes it's just worth getting across the line. But also, you've gotta stand firm and make sure that they're actually willing to buy. And again, even going back to the example of getting an offer in tech sales, I like to deploy the same strategy when someone's negotiating me in a software sales deal, where I'm like, hey, listen, I'm gonna see what I can do, but my ask is this. If I can come back and get a 20% discount for you at $80,000, I need a commitment before we hang up the phone that you are willing to sign this contract today. And guys, I'm dead serious. I cannot do this unless you promise me that right now. And these are the types of ways you can negotiate, get exactly what you want. And again, I don't wanna to get too hypothetical, but the point being is very open and transparent conversation. While some people have more aggressive tactics, again, this is a situation where you're at the finish line. So it's totally different depending on where you're at in the stage. But these are the types of things you can ask. These are the types of conversations you wanna to have to ideally power through these different objections. You can talk about tactics and strategies all day long. And I've mentioned a lot of the strategies here, which is open and transparent communication, having very clear asks and deadlines, and also never giving anything without an ask or a favor in return. All of this comes back to having leverage in the first place. If you don't have any leverage, if I don't have the ability to say to all these affiliates that, hey, I sell my own coaching and courses through this channel for people who need it, then they have more leverage on me because I might be desperate for the money. While it can be done respectfully and while other people will be very malicious, always detach yourself from the emotion of how frustrating it can be when someone tries to negotiate with you or lowball you or whatever. As long as you're confident in the leverage that you have and you're transparent in your communication, you'll set yourself up to get the best results for yourself again and again. So I hope that helps. I know we jumped on a few different examples, but I just wanted to provide my two cents. And it's a very real thing that once you get good at, will translate to numerous different areas of both your sales career and personal life. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.